Day four of the circuit, a wet Monday morning in Waterford, and ahead of the surviving crews, six stages on the long trek to Galway, where they'll arrive around tea time. And the day begins with the story of a Welshman, an Englishman, an Irishman, and a Scot. For those are the drivers figuring most prominently on the leaderboard from last night. The leader is still Di Llewellyn. And look down there, through the top ten, you'll see that for home fans there's a lot to cheer too, because there are three Irishmen there, Coleman, McHale and Bonner. But of course the rally isn't all about the top drivers, there are those in it battling just to keep pace as it were. This is the story of one of those, John Underwood, who began the rally back in Belfast last Friday, working out of a tent. This is how it's gone for him. Before the start in Belfast, we went to Crawfordsburn Country Park to find this enthusiastic team, who had improved their accommodation arrangements slightly by moving into a scout hut. It's very comfortable. We have a gas fire here. There's a kitchen out the back, a bedroom, a toilet block and a shower. It's all you need, really. So we're quite happy here. Well, this is enthusiasm, I think, like I've never seen it in running. What's your total budget for the entire event? Uh, we reckon about £1,000 if all goes to plan and we actually get round. So. And how does that break down? Um, the major part of it we've already spent. Um, there's about 325 on the entry, 35 uh, to use a service car, 68 pounds for insurance. Um, the maps cost Russell about 50 pounds. Uh, there's the pace notes which we bought ready-made. They cost us a further 75 pounds. For the events, we've had to put the tyres on the car. We'll have to put petrol in it all the way round and the service car as well. So there's still a, a lot more to spend. There's been a lot of ingenuity in this whole plan. Well, we don't have any financial resources, so we have to use our ingenuity to get out here. Um, the aim is to do the Open Championship, go out on international events, gain a lot of experience, which we can perhaps put to good use later on. I know the sacrifices that you make for motorsport are quite incredible. I believe you actually used to sleep in your rally car. That was last year when I was doing the Nova Junior Cup, um, a one-make series for Vauxhall Novas um, for young drivers under 25. And the salary began to get a bit stretched, and I had the choice between paying the rent check and going out on a rally, and uh, the rally won, I'm afraid. John is being ably assisted in this great adventure by co-driver and general organiser Russell Eden, an unemployed quantity surveyor from the north of England. We anticipate the accommodation for the whole of the circuit will only cost us £24. We couldn't afford hotels, so I actually contacted the Irish scout movement, uh, who recommended this site to me. Uh, we came over with the intention of camping. Uh, we couldn't find anywhere dry enough to pitch the tents, and the warden was kind enough to offer this wonderful sort of bunkhouse to us, which we are most grateful for. This is costing us 50 pence per night per person. I, I quite enjoy the challenge of um, getting out there on events and spend, spending very little and being in the same events as the works crews. Three days later, unlike many of the works crews, they're still in the rally. The well, stage is completed on a budget that probably wouldn't even do the PR man for one of the major teams. Oh, we've just had a major budget change. I've had to buy some racing tyres. We were using the road tyres and we punctured two in successive stages. Um, they were breaking up without actually hitting anything. So I've had to put some racers on, uh, 300 quid's worth. Have you got enough money to finish the event? Um, we think so, yeah. So, it's all on access. <laughs> <laughs> well, when everybody else goes off to their luxury hotel tonight, what will you be doing? Um, we'll be going down to the tents tonight. We used them last night and they're excellent. The only thing that, that we are short of is brake pads. If there's anyone in TV land with brake pads for a samba with Steve's brakes, that would be very much appreciated. The ingenuity of Underwood and Eden and their part-time service crew has captured the imagination to such an extent that an impromptu whip round takes place on Waterford Quay. Oh, don't look at my handbag completely now. I give my five, right? Well, I'm... Right? Out of ten kids, that's not bad. If this keeps on, we'll be making profits. Of course rallying is expensive, but John proves that if you're determined enough, you can get into the action with the big boys.
Well, one bit of good news we did learn here in Waterford, the names of the four members of the Irish Rally team who are going off to the Rothmans Cyprus Rally in September. And those names are about to be announced by Richard O'Rourke, the team coordinator. Richard, who are the lucky four? Well, the four people we've selected are AJ Keating, Frank Maher, Maria Maloney and Pat Dunyon. Now, I said they're going to represent Ireland in Cyprus. Why Cyprus? Well, we've had a lot of contact um, with Cyprus over the last couple of years. I've been out there for the last two years and uh, other people like Brian Patterson and Sammy Hamill and some journalists have operated in the press room in Cyprus. And uh, the press officer of the Cyprus Rally, Tony Christodoulou, has in fact been the assistant press officer here for the last couple of years. So there's quite a lot of contact there. And uh, the Cypriots, funnily enough, uh, think that Cyprus is a little bit like Ireland and that it's divided through political problems and uh, they're an island country like ourselves. Uh, it's a totally different type of rally into Ireland, of course. It's loose surface, very hot, very dusty. And we thought if we're going to take people abroad at all, we may as well make it an adventure for them. But what of the unsung heroes of any rally, the service crews? David Lapworth, team engineer of Rothmans, gives us some insight into their world. It's hard work for the mechanics because they usually end up working longer hours actually than the, uh, than the drivers by quite a margin. How do you recruit these people? I mean, are they um, motorsport enthusiasts? Or? Well, we've got a mixture. We've got probably now in the team 50% sort of established old hands that have been around rallying for years. You know, some of the lads have been around for 10 years or more. Uh, and we've got uh, three or four young lads, uh, two of whom we started off as, as apprentices and are just learning the ropes from the others. Well, now they're really producing miracles. A gearbox change in 13 minutes, yeah. that's totally unheard of two years ago. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, that's probably 50% practice and uh, sort of tuning the, the methods, and 50% uh, actually just a sort of little modifications to the way we, which bolts we're using, which places, trying to get it so that perhaps as many bolts as possible are a common spanner size, so there's not too much searching for spanners, uh, just lots of little tricks, and it gradually gets quicker and quicker. David, a damp morning, but I don't suppose that worries you too much? Uh, no, as, as long as the weather stays pretty constant, it's, um, it's easier to choose the tyres. The problem is when we have showery weather like we were having yesterday and the stages are wet and then dry and then wet, that's when it's difficult. So you I'd rather, rather it stays one thing. You've got quite a comfortable lead in hand. Does that mean you can afford to take things a little bit easier this morning? Uh, no, uh, I don't think so, because uh, when Jimmy had a problem yesterday uh, we thought well we'll ease off a little bit um, and we eased off too much and Russell took 23 seconds off us on a stage so I mean it, you mustn't ease off too much um, but yet you can like just take it a little bit easier perhaps. If this is easier it doesn't look it. Russell Brooks knows that this is the section of the rally that will really count. Ahead are 21 stages of nearly 48 hours of non-stop motoring. Coleman's plan is to stay in touch with Brooks, who is just over three minutes ahead. Oh. Harry Toivonen makes it three metros in the top ten. And Austin McHale starts the run home in a lively mood. Vincent Bonner's performances this weekend have been outstanding proving that his 1983 Donegal win was no flash in the pan. Simon Davidson is in the sole remaining Nissan 240 RS. And this notoriously tough car could well gain a lot of ground in what lies ahead. Auricula on the homeward run, with that enormous Group A lead, was eight minutes as they left Waterford. David Metcalf in the GM Dealer Sport Astra is still second in Group A. But less than a minute behind, we have the similar car, if differently named, Dealer Opel Team Ireland Cadet GSI of Frank Fennell. Brian Wiggins makes it a GM quartet at the top of Group A. But Andrew Wood is now exactly a minute behind. Eddie Coulton is having a glorious first outing in the Group A Peugeot. They have now moved ahead of the following Richard Hall, but only 19 seconds separate them. Although the order is now reversed, the battle has been this close for two days. Harry Hockley's opposition in the up to 1300 Group A class has been from Charles McVitie's Samba. 
and the Englishman has to hurry as McVitie is only 18 seconds back. Then comes another dealer Opel Team Ireland entry, the Cadet GSI of David Wright, lying second in Group N and leading his class. Coming round the mountain of Sleeve Le Mans, the leader. These right angular bends suit the Manta. But there are reports that Billy Coleman has a misfire. But we can't detect it here. Jimmy McRae isn't making any great inroads on Llewellyn at the moment. But here's the story of the day so far. Mark Lovell is closing rapidly on Coleman. And the new Ford is hungry for fourth place. Another fast mover, the Unipart Metro. In the top ten, we still have four four-wheel drive cars. Sadly, at the end of this 13-mile trip round Sleeve Le Mans, we are missing Vincent Bonner. The engine has finally given up, and Davidson moves up to eighth. And we now have two Group A cars in the top ten, Penty Auricola and David Medcalf whose wide-wheeled front-wheel drive Astra is a handful over the puddles. David Wood hurries through the lanes. And here comes that fabulous up to 1600cc Group A battle. Eddie Coulton and Richard Hall in the car park sunbeam reveling in the wet conditions. Louise Nolan's RS Turbo was forced out of the rally with clutch problems on day one. But now the blonde Dublin girl is back, acting as a double-O sweeper car, with our low-slung camera showing just how slippery those early stages are. With two stages complete, the battle on the roads is replaced by a battle against the clock, as the cars arrive for some restoration work in the Littleton service area. It's a time of controlled panic, as tyres are replaced and any damage is repaired. Expert maintenance here can mean the difference between success and failure. The cars are replenished with fuel. And there's much needed sustenance for the crews too. It's a time when vital decisions have to be taken. Decisions which can make or break a car's chance of victory. Uh, you go for the intermediate. Yeah, narrow cut these things. Uh -huh. okay. uh, it's a bit of a problem for us. Both stages were very, very muddy, and in a two-wheel drive car, uh, you have real serious problems with traction, and we lose out a lot of time to the four-wheel drive cars. I think something in the region of 20 to 30 seconds a stage. Condition this morning have really favoured the four-wheel drive cars, and um, we dropped, I think it's about 20 seconds in the first couple of hours. Difficult day for tyre choice once again. Yes, we're uh, opting for the safe choice all the time, and uh, I think that's the way for us to treat it at the moment. Uh, what we're really looking forward to is the sections in Galway, Partry Mountains, and uh, maybe some of these cars will have problems again. I still think that a lot of things can happen, and I, I firmly believe I have a really good chance to. The Circuit of Ireland Rally has returned to Tipperary this year, part of the world where the scenery is attractive in the extreme. But one of the local landmarks is Keeper Hill here. And they say around these parts that if it snows on Keeper Hill on Easter Monday, the tenants get a year rent free. Well, it's Easter Monday, there's no snow at Keeper Hill, but the Circuit of Ireland Rally is going through this part of the world. The heat is really on as the professionals revel in these glorious stages, seven miles south of Nina. Jimmy McRae is rapidly catching Russell Brooks, but not David Llewellyn. But that misfire in the Porsche has cost Coleman 32 seconds over Brooks in the two-wheel drive battle. Lovell's progress is electrifying in the Ford. The current British national champion is now nine seconds behind Coleman in fifth place. Harry Toivonen's excellent run has now been hampered by electrical problems, and he arrives at stage 34 in quite a flap. The Shell Manta 400, driven by Austin McHale, is undoubtedly one of the entertainers of the event, as the Dubliner flings the Black Manta around with gay abandon. 
Simon Davidson has now a gearbox problem. It will have to be changed at the Limerick service. Are these Limerick ladies posing for Panty? Or merely stargazing at the Group A astrologers? Richard Hall in the Sunbeam TI hurries through, ahead of John Lyons, who is already prepared for serving after hours in the Budweiser Honda Civic. Then it's the group end battle for normal cars between Stanley Orr's rear-wheel drive Toyota Corolla and the front-wheel drive Opal of Monaghan man David Wright. At the Limerick service area, a worried Harry Toivonen is uncertain about his future in the event. He has lost a lot of time on the Tipperary stages. Uh, the last two stages our engine was not running uh, well. It was only running with uh, four or five cylinders. And uh, so then the whole power was missing. And uh, it looks quite bad now. It doesn't look repairable? No. We, the mechanics are just uh, looking at that. And, uh, Let's see what happens. However, 15 minutes later, as Harry prepares to leave, there is much better news from Dave's champion, Red's team manager. Well, I'm sure it's a long, still a long way to go, so you know, I don't think we're too bothered about the odd second era there at the moment. Is the car going to stick it? I don't see any reason why not. Stage 35, Loch Kutra, 14 and a half miles of smooth grass roads with deceptively tight bends. Coleman and Morgan are hard at work in the Porsche cockpit, but there's a tricky moment coming up as the brakes lock up. Slow left opens, one half. Turn bad right. Twenty. Sharp left. Twenty. But it's not a serious problem. The Porsche continues. Llewellyn's position at the head of the field remains secure. As he heads into Galway, the young Welshman says he'd be happy if the rally ended now. Russell Brooks has been driving brilliantly throughout the day, holding second place in spite of a painful hip injury. His team manager is searching Galway for a physiotherapist. Coleman's car still bears the scars from yesterday's accident, but it's still going well. However, the final stage of the day is another of those hairy moments. But once again, the cork farmer comes out unscathed. Jimmy McRae has been flying over the last two stages of the day, setting the fastest times in his effort to catch Brooks and Llewellyn. Mark Lovell and Peter Davis have slowed their charge over the early stages and are anxious to get the RS200 into the final service of the afternoon. Austin McHale has been throwing the tail out with style today, and the crowd love it. Simon Davison's Nissan is still going strong in eighth place, while Penty Auricula is ninth and still leads Group A. Frank Fennell, the Dublin photographer, has forced his way into the top ten in his dealer Opal Team Ireland cadet. John Lyons shows a certain amount of style in his Budweiser Honda. 
Well, Andrew Wood is heading for a top 10 place soon, having fought his way back from 43rd after an early accident. And Brian Much has severely altered the front of his strata, but he still makes it into Galway. And helping to maintain the Scandinavian challenge, Lars Sundling from Norway in his Group A Honda. And so to Galway and an hour's rest for the crews. The 10th placed Frank Fennell drives in after a very successful day. Uh, very good, yeah. We think we have ourselves up to 10th okay. now. We started off 12th. We're uh, very happy now at the moment. So what were conditions like out there? Uh, it was very, very slippy early on. Uh, much slippier than previously. So uh, everybody was in uh, bother. We had a few hairy moments, but uh, managed to get through. Is he looking forward to tonight? Uh, yes, after rest now, we should be, yeah. Uh, so, uh, that's it. No problems. Meanwhile, Penty Auricola's co-driver, Ronan McNamee, has a problem to solve. The service crew were asking me where in Galway could they get something to eat, and we've only got just an hour here. So, there's a hamburger joint up the street, and we're all going to that now. Well, Di Llewellyn is leading this rally into the final night. We talked to you the first night, you thought you were leading, then it turned out you weren't, but now you are, very definitely. It must feel great. Yes, it's... It is a really nice feeling, but of course, uh, yeah. got a, a long, hard night in front of us, so uh, just keep my fingers crossed that uh, we don't have any problems. Which is really what it must come down to, because you're in a handy enough position, I would have thought, not to have to go absolutely on the limit. That's right. I mean, we're five minutes in the lead, so uh, <laughs> if we have a problem, then it, it obviously it'll be shortened a lot. So uh, if we have a good, smooth run, uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll do it all right. Well, Russell Brooks was able to take advantage of the misfortune of the former teammate Jimmy McRae to claim second place, but the work still has to be done. Oh yes, uh, Jimmy's going very quickly, and you've got to remember, of course, that the Manta is a very reliable rally car, but it's one of the, uh, the old type of rally cars, and it's not as powerful as the Metro, so uh, very pleased that we can hang on to second place at the moment. I understand you had a bit of a problem and you were seeking physiotherapy. I don't know what it is, but uh, I woke up this morning with a terrible pain in my backside. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't Mike Broad either. <laughs> uh, it's got a bit easier now as the day's worn on, so not too much trouble. Jimmy McRae is in third place with the Metro that gave problems earlier on, but now is OK. The car is OK, and the car's going well. The run-up to goal, we've had no problems. Uh, so we just hope we can continue through the night like that. You gave yourself a lot to do. Is it still there for the winning? I don't think, unless David Llewellyn has problems, I don't see us catching him. But I don't think we could catch him, other than he had a problem. But presumably that isn't going to enter your head when you start to drive again tonight. No, 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 no. We're just out to, to try and try and be in uh, Belfast first. And Billy Coleman is in fourth place, and uh, a very popular fourth place, of course, but um, you've had a few problems. Mostly small problems today, uh, George. Um, the big problem we've had, of course, that bloody puncture two days ago, and uh, no matter what I do, I can't seem to uh, make up the time. Um, we had a bit of an accident yesterday, which, of course, was in desperation, trying to make up four minutes, which is not easy to do. <laughs> and um, uh, we just can't really crack Russell Brooks. That's, that's the position of it. The margin is exactly the same. We've done six stages since Waterford, and literally every second one, he's beaten us, we've beaten him, and never more than three seconds in it. So not a lot you can do in that situation. Well, now, you're facing a long <laughs> night, a very long night. What are the particular difficulties of driving at night? Uh, well, fortunately it looks a good clear night, so hopefully the fog is about the worst thing that rally drivers always fear. It doesn't look as if we'll have that, but there are um, indications of um, maybe frost later on, which actually could suit my car, so it might not be such a bad thing. So day four of the Circuit of Ireland has been completed, but there is still the night to come. Our programme coming to you from Galway now, bringing you an up-to-date position. But as you're watching, the drivers are still out there competing. Eight special stages through the night before breakfast in Oma, and then seven more to bring them to the finish at the City Hall in Belfast just before two o'clock tomorrow. Let me remind you of the standings at the moment as we go into this final night of the circuit. Di Llewellyn still leads in his Metro 6R4. Russell Brooks is second. Jimmy McRae is in third place. Billy Coleman is in fourth. And then perhaps the joker in the pack in the brand new Ford RS200, Mark Lovell. Could he be the one to spring the surprise? Coleman's in fourth. Austin McHale is in seventh. Vincent Bonner is gone, but there are still three Irishmen in the top ten. Frank Fennell has squeezed in at the bottom of that top ten list. Well, that's our programme for the moment. Hope you have enjoyed it and that you'll join us again for a final circuit report tomorrow night. Good night for now.